Hello and welcome to another episode of Cyril's Brettspiele. And today we have another special. This time we are talking about Xia Legends of the Drift System. But this is just one part of this new video. So what I'm also doing is I'm talking today with Josh Taco Icebrenner, uh, another famous board game reviewer. Just in uh, I'm the guy with the video and he's the guy with the power of the written words so he has his own website and I would say we are switching back and forth to Josh and me and talking about Xia Legends of a Drift System. Josh please introduce yourself. Thank you Niels. I'm so happy to join you on this review. I am Taco from SO1KS Gaming and today as Niels said we'll be talking about Zaya, Legend of the Drift System. To see what's inside this box, I'm going to shoot it back over to my colleague here, Niels. Take it Thanks, away. Thanks, Josh. So now you know who is Josh, and now let's open the box of Xia, and I will talk a little bit while we are opening the box and taking a look to the components. First of all, you have this Fame Point Tracker, which is a Victory Point Tracker. Then you have this Ship Builds. They are uh, divided into three different tiers, which means in basic speaking in general the level of the ship so level three is here tier three is purple then you have tier two is green indicated here and you have uh, then the beginner ships it's tier one you start with a tier one ship you have billions on tons of these ones here now you have the planetary systems all of them coming into this shapes here the back side is always the same, so you have a big stack of this Xia cards here. And when you explore, you simply draw a new one. These little uh, symbols here indicate that you have to match the symbols between two different tiles to know where you are going to. Then, what else do you have? You have handy dandy little helper cards. That's always good and something I really appreciate. You also have fame points here coming into this area so these are here things you can earn fame points with and these things are titles so you can become a destroyer or a collector or a veteran whatever during the game so at some points in the game you flip over this new title and the race starts whoever gets this achievements first on here simply gets a uh, victory points you have some contracts or tasks on every single tile here on your galaxy you have this symbol here and that guarantees you to get a card if you don't have one these uh, contracts are really various from hard to super hard to super light however they are bring a lot a lot of replayability and chaos into this game and you have for each single ship one of these cards and these cards helping you simply each ship is on the back side as you can see with some special powers that you can use over the course of the game but wait we have more so we have metal coins this cool metal coins one uh, five thousand and one thousand we have some mystery tokens we have these markers here they are just simply representing here your ships i will show you that in a second we have um yeah gear that you can equip your ship with we have four different chi uh, color and uh, shaped dice so a d6 d8 d12 and d20 and you see we have a pile of these upgrades here for your ships you have resources in one two three four five different colors all of them are cool cubes as you can see some of them have solid some of them have this milky flare cool for each single player you have this uh, little wooden pieces here to indicate your um your actions and we have this cool very cool pre painted miniatures so of this spaceships all of them coming onto these standees here so that is pretty cool so you have three neutral ones and six gigantic ships here one two three four five six six medium size and six tiny ones and the 
size is just tier one, tier two, or tier three. So, and when you upgrade your ship, you have to p start with tier one always at the beginning of the game and then going to tier two and tier three and last but not least we have a couple of damage tokens here damage cubes damage crystals it's orange crystals also very very cool so what you're doing is you have your ship like uh, let's talk about this one here the president memory Oh no, no, sorry, persistent memory, sorry, not president. So you have your ship here and what you're doing is you are buying these tiles here, these uh, upgrades for money. When you buy these upgrades, you are building these upgrades in. Yellow is always a missile, so let's assume you're building this missile. You simply play, uh, place it here in your ship cargo. You reduces your cargo, however, now you have a fighter with missiles on board. You also can build a blaster here, and a blaster obviously fires in here as well. You can build it on any of these spots here. This is shields, you could also add shields, but the most important part is this one. This is an engine, and that allows you to fly around. So this would be a full equipped ship. And then you don't have any space for goods, which is not good because it's also a little bit of pick up and deliver. But now on, I would say I talked. Oh, I just wanted to show you the insert of this game box here. All of this, all of this plastic inserts come with the base game. So first uh, of all, I, would say I, I wanted to address. This is the first game from the publisher Far Off Games and Far Off Games just right out of the gecko, just right out of the box from me. It's gorgeous, it's outstanding. Pre-painted airships, pre-painted miniatures, uh, all these cubes here, all these metal coins, the four different dice, all the cardboard stock is so good. Uh, this is also the crystals, also, wow. Uh, and you hear my voice. I, I'm jumping up and down when I just simply think about the components in the game. This is for me top, top, top notch of what you can produce right now in this industry. What do you think about this, uh, Josh? Niels, I agree with you wholeheartedly on this. The components, they're just awesome. You got the pre painted miniatures, all these awesome hexes. You've got an insert. I am a sucker for a good insert. It shows they put, took the time to really develop the game and even think about the storage, which is, a, which is really appreciative by me. Now I look forward to hearing more of what you have to say about that. Yeah, Zaya. I definitely agree. So yeah, thanks so much. So um, this is definitely the components of the game, but now let's jump right into the game itself and the uh, replayability and the fun of this game. Um, for me, and I hope you can second that, otherwise you have your own opinion and just go for it. However, let's start me first. So. Uh, I felt a little bit of caught in a loop sometimes. So it depends on, you can scale, as Josh told you, the number of victory points and the, num the length of the game with this. So, however, um, when you have a really short trade route between planet A and planet B and there's only one sector in between, so you can easily turn that game into a pick up and delivery, pick up and deliver, pick up and deliver, pick up. Oh, there's an opponent coming. Oh, I don't care about guns. I want to have space for goods and pick up and delivery. Every time I'm delivering two goods for one action, bam, I get a fame point. Pick up and delivery, pick up and, oh, there's a contract. Okay, if there's a title, okay, let's try to get the, oh no, that takes me too long. That takes me five turns to get this title. Let's take, pick up and deliver, pick. So I am was sometimes in this loop, uh, especially when the planet's coming out and they are very close together. Um, that was a little bit of the downside of the game for me. What do you think about this, Josh? Niels, I'm gonna disagree with you on this point. Reason being, 
Yes, trader, being a trader, carrying all those goods, especially if they're the planets are really close to each other, can be really good. But you don't have room for shields on your ship. You, you've got all this area, but you're saving it for cargo to try and trade off. You know, you got your fast engine, but you're leaving yourself wide open to be shot by someone who went combat heavy. And that's where I think paper rock, this game is very much a paper rock scissor type game where you've got the trader who can earn money and victory points faster than exploration but is way more susceptible to getting attacked by a combat focused player and so that is the challenge is you really have to be one of these three specialties and work off of what the other players are doing so I'm going to turn it back to you to hear what you have to say. Oh, well, that's a very good point. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, that is one of the things I have a little bit of complaints about the game. The other one is these contracts here. They are, in general speaking, in general, very powerful. Every time you fulfill a contract, you get so much good stuff out of it. A couple of times fame points, a couple of times just simply a lot of money. However, that is always super good. But there's a little bit of a flip side with that. When you need some systems, in this case, for an example here, Vortex 86, to uh, complete your contract, and Vortex 86 is the last card on, on the bottom of the stack, the only solution, the only option to get rid of your contract is by getting destroyed. Every time you're destroyed, chup, this contract is gone and you are a new uh, merchant, a new soldier, whatever. But the only way to get rid of this is either by solve it and get victory points for it, but when the system is not on the board, well, that's pretty tough, or get simply destroyed and handing over some other people victory points. So these are very swingy, so if you get good ones, wow, you're super lucky. If you get bad ones, wah, and that is good for me for a game with up to 10 points. 15 it's woo, etchy and 20, so there's too much luck involved for me for a three hour game. Just my personal opinion. And you, Taco? Niels, you made some interesting points. Here now, here's my take on Zaya Legend of the Drift system. I find it to be an epic sci-fi story in a box. Each game, you're telling a new story about you and your crew on one ship going across the galaxy, whether it be trading to different planets to help them, or trying to fight, be a you know, pirate in combat and attacking the other ships, or exploring distant new lands and finding new alien civilizations and new nebulas and exploring them and earning points that way. I mean, in our game, it came down to the last turn, me racing across the galaxy to stop you from trading with a planet and prevent the galaxy be f from becoming at war. And I did so by sacrificing my own ship and ramming into you and destroying you. I know you're a little, little angry about that, but it was fun. We all had fun in the end, and it told a story. And it's a story that we'll all remember. And that's where I think Zaya hits its best points. You don't have a fleet of ships, but rather just one ship, and you associate yourself with that ship, and you end up telling an awesome story. Is there a nebula that everyone took damage in, or always ran out of power in? Was there a certain planet that was, that was so hard to find, but we finally found it and, and completed a mission there to get people to to that location and that's what I loved about Zaya. I understand what you're saying about the dice being unfair you know you roll always roll the two yeah you roll the two a lot and I rolled lots of high numbers I think one way you could solve that instead of doing you know the best out of two results is you could always take the dice from formula D and use those dice and the associated number with them because they go like from four to eight for the eight-sided die, that might be a better option than one through eight. 
So that might be something to take a look at. Again, I love Zaya. I'm looking forward so much to the expansion and playing this more with my friends. And Neil, I'm sending it back over to you. And last but not least, and this is probably for you guys, the most important thing on this show here is my rating, my point system. Oh, no, not today. My, our point rating today. And this time, uh, yeah, let's make the final judgment. Uh, hard quick dirty and easy so for me production value replayability fun out of this game is top notch so um, everything is perfect except for this little bit of luck for a two and a half hour game or three hour game so therefore I'm only playing this with up to 15 fame points and never with 20 that's too much for me just for me there's another uh, thing on top I've not talked about that but uh, this is the dice rolling and when you have your engines and you roll always with the engine you can fly a d12 and it's always a two and you're super slow and your opponent yeah you i'm talking about you um is always uh, rolling a 12 and it's super fast man is so yeah the replayability is kept down by the huge amount of luck and but you can fix that you can fix it very very easy with some uh, additional house rules we invented a couple of house rules like draw two of these contracts keep one or just roll twice and take the uh, roll you want or just if you are one two three rolling one two three you get a free re-roll next time for the next roll so that you have don't have twice a really bad roll if you have a 12 uh, uh, 11 or 12 you lose your um, token so we invented some tokens for a re-roll and things like that so there are a couple of ways around to um, make that a little bit more smooth and unlucky however back to the point system oh, and I'm talking yeah I know I'm talking too much for me um, overall I really like the game I love it it is part of my permanent collection probably forever because this is a perfect balance for me for Merchant of Venus meets so, Eclipse. So this was my, no not my, I'm always saying my, this was our point of view for Xia Legends of the Drift System. And right now or probably when this uh, episode comes out, it's just a couple of days ago that they finished the first expansion series for it on Kickstarter. What a shame if we cannot bring out this episode fast enough. We will try it. Hopefully we can do it. Otherwise, check out on Kickstarter or on Amazon this game if you are in for space operas and big boxes with tons of good quality components in it. See you next time. This was my first and hopefully a lot of episodes with Josh. And yeah, if you wanted to see Josh a little bit more on the channel, yeah, just switch on to Cyril's Brettspiele or just read Taco's blog. I will put it in the links and comments here. And yeah, simply subscribe us, uh, go to his website and check out more reviews on Cyril's Brettspiele or sogwonks.com. That's really complicated. So the last word goes to Josh. Bye bye. Next turn, it's Niels again. Bye. Once again, thank you, Niels, for having me along. And please subscribe to his channel. I'm not even gonna try and pronounce that what he says. Zeros, Birch. I, I don't know. Either way, subscribe to it. He puts out great content. I am Taco. One la one last time. Thank you for allowing me to be on this and listening to my take on Zaya, you can follow me at www.so1ks.com, that should be in the bottom of the screen, or you can follow me at Twitter at SO1KS. This is Taco saying, till next time, have fun, and may the dice be with you.